Hello, it's Jimmy here at the Royalties and I have here a Ford Mondeo to look at. Okay, quick look inside the car, we have an engine management light on. Just plugging in our diagnostics. We'll shut down the door. Okay, it's done 147,000 miles, is it? Okay, some quick information on this is it had a engine management light come on, it went to a garage and they suggested to do a forced EPF regen and it didn't work came down to 147% or something and um, that didn't work so then they decided to do some research and then they put a vaporizer on it that didn't work either so they then decided to put a new DPF on it and all was well for a couple of days and the engine lights come back on so they brought it back and done a fourth regen again and then the engine lights come back on again so uh, it's kind of a repetitive issue where the DPF keeps DPF light keeps coming back on every few days basically so need to figure out what's going on. Okay I'm gonna use the X431 Euro from launch and we'll run a scan of the car here. This is where we're going to be looking. Block TPF, block TPF conditions incorrect for the particle filter, and okay, all right. So looking at this, all right, these are just block TPF codes, and this one is saying that the car can't region because the conditions are incorrect. Those incorrect conditions are going to be this exhaust after treatment glow plug circuit open. All right, but it's had a new one, so let's have a chat with a customer. Okay, so a customer says. The vaporizer has been replaced and yeah so after numerous sort of back and forth with the garage he's obviously f had a look at my videos and found that there is a fuse for the vaporizer he says he has replaced that so I'm right my question right now is is that glow plug circuit fault there because when they changed the vaporizer they didn't check the fuse or has the customer now he said he's replaced the fuse so the next question is, is the fuse blown again? If it is, it's probably under, uh, it's got a faulty vaporizer on it. If the fuse hasn't blown, it's probably gonna be the case that it was uh, a blown fuse. So when your original vaporizer fails, it can block blow the fuse and then you put a new one in, you need to change the fuse. If you don't change the fuse, you've still got a, a new vaporizer that's not working. So if this customer has now replaced the fuse, unfortunately it's too late because he's changed the fuse now, which is, it's it's a good idea to change the fuse, but that fault code isn't just gonna go away. We need to do resets on the vaporizer and we'd also now, unfortunately, need to clean that DPF again. If we just reset this DPF and, and or do a force regen, likeliness is, is your new DPF is gonna be damaged. So we'd need to clean out the new DPF, change the fuse if that's the case, and send him on his way. But if not, if the fuse has been changed and it's blown again, it's gonna need a new vaporizer as well, unfortunately. So it's gonna be a case of back to the start. So it's gonna be new vaporizer and a DPF clean. It's probably what he needed from the beginning, but if it's done in the wrong order, this is where I'm making, trying to make this clear as possible for this video is, it looks to me like these repairs have been done in the wrong order and bits and pieces have been missed out so the fuse hasn't been changed now he's back with a block dpf again um then the vaporizer was changed but the fuse wasn't changed block dpf it all needs to be done in the right order so fuse changed vaporizer fixed clean your dpf then reset it um you can't do it in the wrong orders otherwise you're going to go around in circles okay so that's my old um multimeter that i normally use I've I've had these, you can see by this one, it's been in the van for a fairly long time. I've got some of these, they look quite good, so I was going to test a few of them out, so this might be a good idea to test this one out. Let's try and get it working. I'll put the link again in the video 
where you can buy this from. But let's open her up and test it out. So part of the reason you need to upgrade some of these is this is quite a pain to recharge because of this. It's got this old cable on. It's really hard to get a hold of those cables. This one obviously it's got the new USB-C on it and a little digital display. So a bit more modern. Let's test it out. Okay, so checking the pins. We've got continuity at the fuse. Check the voltage, 14 volts. We'll check the voltage at both sides. Yep. Okay. So it looks like the customer himself has figured out that the fuse is blown, he's replaced it. But of course, he hasn't reset any default code, so that fuse isn't gonna blow because the vaporizer isn't going to activate. Um, it's a bit, it can be risky now to activate the vaporizer because you've got a blocked up DPF. Let's just go in and have a look at some, some data here. Okay, so here's what we're looking at on the DPF. 30 millibars, which is a, is a very blocked DPF, especially for one that's just been replaced. 300% calculations. And yeah, it's not safe to activate the, uh, the vaporizer, unfortunately. Let's have a look. So we haven't got anything there to activate it. Now, usually the only way to activate that vaporizer is to activate a regeneration which is that one static region you know what everyone sort of knows i don't like to do that but what we're going to do is we're going to clean out the dpf here first and then we'll do some tests on the vaporizer afterwards so if i clean out the dpf and we don't have a buildup of soot in there it will be safe for me to activate a region i'm not going to activate a full region process which is 40 minutes just a couple of minutes activate the region so just so the vaporizer can activate itself and then i will see if the fuse is blown so we don't know i don't know if the original mechanic has replaced the fuse and it's blown again but it looks like it hasn't it looks like that's been missed to me okay we're going to start the cleaning process which is using the launch uk dpf cleaning fluid so we're going to get that inserted into the dpf so there it is brand new dpf that unfortunately needs cleaning. Okay, that's now connected to the DPF. Squeeze the trigger. 120 PSI of pressure, along with the liquid, just makes a nice foam that goes in there. So we're just gonna fill that up. So doing this also does do a little bit of a test, which is the metal pipe there that goes into the DPF for the pressure sensor. Just to make sure that that's not blocked, because if that's blocked, the fluid won't go in, or the pipe will just blow off. So at least we know the pipe is clear. Okay, back in the car, we'll hold the revs up at 3000 RPM. Get a graph up if we can. Okay, idle we're hovering between zero to ten, so that's gonna be sort of nine to ten millibars of pressure. Let's hold the revs back up around sort of 3000 RPM. Still look a little bit high there. Hopefully that will start to come down in a minute.
okay that's good enough we've got a clean DPF there so these doesn't read anything below 10 so that's not zero HPA it just, it just can't read below 10 that's all right so now what we can do is what I'm gonna do here we'll go to the power control modules unfortunately it won't allow me I'll try it but we'll try to do a DPF region but it, I'll show you just just to show you basically how the system works let's just put the ignition on is what it's asking to do so if we try and do one it should not allow me to do a region because it's not in a safe level it thinks it's not in a safe level because of the percentage of soot that's there right ignition on start the engine Maybe it will, but shouldn't do. That doesn't seem to be anything happening just yet. Okay, so that's clearly not doing anything. So we'll just turn it off. What we're going to do is reset the particle filter values. That's done. Now we also have an option here to prime the vaporizer, but that doesn't activate the glow plug on the vaporizer. The only way to do that is by to get the car to do a regen. Now we can wait two or three hundred miles, but we don't want to do that. For we don't want the customer to wait 300 miles to uh, be able to know if his vaporizer is working or not. So, if it's blowing the fuse, basically. So, what we want to do is obviously do just trigger off a regen on the car. I'm going to clear the fault codes now first, and then we'll try that again. So, we're going to have all of these sort of fault codes back up again. Clear. We'll get a certain idea if we have an immediate issue by re re-scanning the codes see if we have anything back no so usually we'd get an immediate fault back for the aftermarket glow plug right so now we'll try that again okay we've got a strange issue where trying to do a regen with this it's just not responding I've tried a different brand of tool which is the autel and this is the same so it's trying to do a static regen but just the car isn't responding so I'm not sure how the last person have done that. I'll just turn now. Now I've got brain freeze. What do I do from here? How can I? How can I get this tested? Um, we can do Ohm's tests on the vaporizer, which is not 100% accurate to me, to be honest. We need to test if it's blowing a fuse once it's pulling power. Um, hmm. I'm going to prime up the vaporizer. I can hear the fuel pump ticking. So I don't know if you can hear that on the video, but we've got the ticking noise from the vaporizer fuel pump. Okay, so I've got two sort of options here. I can take it on a test drive and see if the car will do a regen on its own, or if that doesn't work, my next step will be to put this into the DPF pressure sensor and trick the car into thinking it's got a still got a blocked DPF by increasing the pressure, and then hopefully that might sort of get the car to do a, a regen. We need the car to do a regen to see if the vaporizer is doing its job. Okay, I've done sort of 200 yards. The car is now smoking. We can see that the regen process has activated. We've got five, do you see the temperature increasing? I'm stationary, so that's good. So we should see this number coming down soon. This 300 over here. So this is all very good. We've got the numbers moving exactly what we want to happen and then we'll check the status of the fuse after this is finished. So you see these numbers will sort of even themselves out in a minute. Okay, I'm going to do sort of a 10 or 15 minute test drive of the car. Okay, so I've just pulled over to do talk about a little bit of a concern that's arisen to me at the moment, which is the DPF temperature. So the DPF temperature is sort of not going above 550, 560. The more I drive it, it's coming down, the harder I the car it's coming down to 500 520 515 which is a little bit lower than I'd expect 
and I'm gonna presume that that's because it's a cheap aftermarket DPF. So you can see when I'm stationary, the DPF temperature is actually increasing a little bit. The more I drive the car, the less that temperature comes down. But we need it to come up to 600, 620 degrees, really. I'm just hoping it's gonna be successful and if it doesn't, we can get a fall code for DPF temperature too low. Okay, so where we are so far is the vaporizer hasn't blown a fuse, so I think the, the vaporizer itself is fine. Um, but I think there's an issue with the DPF that's fitted to the car. So this is the third time the car has tried to do its passive regen while I'm driving. It won't exceed this sort of temperature. And I think that's because the quality of the DPF is just not good enough. You see, when I'm stationary, it reaches higher temperature. As I'm driving, this is only hovering around sort of 500 degrees, 490. So, 3,000 RPM, near enough. We've only got 20 millibars. Let's just increase it up a little bit. All the revs up. Pressure's too low, and we're not reaching temperature. It's a bad DPF. So rechecking the fuse, it's not blown. So that just proves the point that the the vaporizer fuse was missed on the first by the first garage. So the vaporizer is, looks fine. Well, the, the fuse on the vaporizer looks fine. I'm still going to confirm the new vaporizer is not blocked again, just in case. But looks to me like it's a aftermarket DPF issue. So pressure test on the vaporizer shows it's not blocked. Okay, so there's the end results of these numbers, 188%. Um, it just won't reach temperature and it hasn't got the right pressure. Um, so unfortunately, sometime in the future, he's gonna get a fault code on here saying, I think it's P242D, uh, exhaust temperature too low for DPF regen. Okay, so it's the end, end of it on this one, really. I'm not really happy with the condition of the DPF, so I've advised the customer to bring me back his old DPF so I can fit that to the car and see what the condition of it is. My highly suspect is that uh, the old DPF is actually fine. There's no soot on the exhaust to this, I've checked. So I'd like to put his old DPF back on and see what the different numbers are. If we do see it in the future, you'll see a part two to this video. Uh, if not, it'll be all over today. So, see you on the next video.